Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be going over how to sort in Python. Uh, so we're going to look at how we can sort a few different data types. So we're going to go over sorting uh, lists and tuples. You can also run sort on dictionaries and you can also sort objects by a custom criteria. Um, but to get started, let's go ahead and look at a couple of ways in which we can just sort a simple list of integers. So I have this list here called li and it contains a bunch of random numbers between one and nine. So if we wanted to sort this, how would we do it? Uh, well, I'm gonna make a new variable here called s underscore li, and I'm gonna set it equal to, and I'm gonna run this sorted function, and I'm gonna pass in our original list to this sorted function. So I'm gonna save that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and print this out to the screen. So I'm gonna uncomment out this print statement here, and print out this s underscore li variable. Now if I run this, you can see here that it did sort this list for us in ascending order. So we have one through nine here. Um, now let me go ahead and print out my original variable as well. So I'm gonna print out this li list. And if I print this out, now you can see down here that my sorted variable uh, is a sorted version of that list, but my original is still the uh, jumbled unsorted group of numbers. Now, what if I wanted to sort that original uh, list of numbers without creating a new variable? Uh, well, there I can use the sort method on the list. So I can say li.sort and then just close off those parentheses. And if I run that, now you can see that we have our sorted variable here that is a sorted version of that. And also when I ran this li.sort, uh, it also sorted the original list of integers also. Now one difference between this sorted function here and this sort method is that the sorted function returns a new sorted list. So that's why we can set it to a variable. But the sorted method uh, just sorts the list in place and then returns none. So this can be important because sometimes people get this confused and uh, they'll try to, so for example, if I was to copy this and I was to try to set this s underscore li to this li.sort. If I was to do that and then run this, you can see that instead of getting this sorted list, we just get this none value here. So if you use the sort method, then don't expect a list to be returned because it's just gonna go ahead and do that in place. Okay, so now we've seen how we can sort these lists in ascending order, but what if I wanted these to be in descending order from highest to lowest? Uh, well, to do that, we can just do pass in this reverse equals true. And if I save that and run it, now you can see that our new variable here is sorted in descending order. And we can also use this exact same parameter with the sort method. So if I pass that in the sort method, then it does the uh, original variable in place in descending order also. Okay, so why would I want to choose the sort function or the sorted function over the uh, sort method? Well, that sort method on the list is uh, is fine if you are working with lists and if you want to modify it in place, but the sorted function gives us a little bit more flexibility because we can pass in any iterable as opposed to uh, the sort method, which works specifically on lists. Uh, so for example here, I have a tuple that has all the same values that we had in our list of integers. And the tuple doesn't have a sort method. So if I do a tuple.sort and run that, then we get an error. Um, so what we have to do here is we have to use the sort function. So I'm gonna do a new variable and do a sorted. I'm gonna take off this method here since it doesn't have one. And I'm gonna save that, and then I'm gonna print out the new variable that we just created here. So if I print this out, save it and run it, now you can see that our s underscore tup uh, variable is a list of the values in our tuple that are now sorted. So for another example here, I have a dictionary, and you can pass a dictionary into sorted also. So I'm gonna do an s underscore di equals uh, sorted and pass in my dictionary there and then I'm going to go ahead and just print this out to the screen I'm going to comment these out now what sorted will do by default with this dictionary is it's just going to sort the keys so if I run this here then you can see that it returned a list with these sorted keys here 
So you can use either method of sorting that you like. You can use either the sorted function or the sort method, as long as you understand the differences. Um, but for the rest of this video, I'm going to use this sorted function uh, because I'm going to be working with examples other than lists. Uh, so the sorted function is what you need for that. So, so far we've sorted integers in ascending and descending order, but what if we wanted to sort values based on a different criteria? Uh, so for example, what if I had a list of integers here and I wanted to sort these based on their absolute value? So you can see I have some uh, negative values here. Now, if I was just to print out uh, this list right now and run this, um, Actually, let me go ahead and sort this list and I'll show you what the uh, default sort is for these negative values. So I'm gonna do sorted and pass in this original list and then I'm going to print out this s underscore li variable. And if I run this, you can see that we got uh, the exact same thing that it's in right now because these negative values are considered less than the positive values like you'd expect. Uh, so we have ne negative six, negative five, negative four, one, two, three. Okay, so like I was saying, what if I wanted to sort this based on the absolute value of these values? So uh, it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So to do this, we can use a key parameter. So when our, with our sorted here, I'm going to pass in a key parameter, and I'm going to say that the key equals abs, which will use the absolute value function. Now what this does is it runs each element through this absolute value function before it makes the comparison. So now if I run it with this key in place, now you can see that my sorted variable is 1, 2, 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Now the key parameter is extremely useful when you're sorting objects with uh, named attributes. Uh, so for example here, I have this very simple class called employee. And within the employee here, we just have a name, an age, and a salary. And uh, this REPR method here, all it does is it tells Python how we want this function represented when it's printed out to the screen. So now I have these uh, three sample employees here that I've created with uh, random names, ages, and salaries. And I'm gonna put all three of these employees into a list called employees. And now I'm going to try to sort these based on a specific attribute. So if I try to sort these without a key, then it's not really going to know how to sort them. So let me go ahead and try to sort them and print this out to the screen. And you can see I get this type error here. And it says unorderable, unorderable types employee uh, can't compare employee to employee. So it's getting this employee object here from this list and it's saying, hey, I don't know how you want me to sort these. So we need to use a key to sort these on and I'm gonna write a custom function uh, in order to sort these. So remember our key takes a function that takes each element of our list and returns what we want to sort on. Uh, so with the absolute value example that I used earlier, I was able to use a built-in function for the key uh, but for this example, we need to write a custom function. Uh, so the function I'm going to write is a very simple one. It's just going to be def, and let's see, I'll do this e underscore sort, and I'll pass in an employee, and then I will just return, and we'll uh, sort based on the employee's name. So I'll do emp.name. So now where I ran this sorted function, I can pass in this key, and I'm just going to pass in... I'm going to tell it to do the key as this esort function here. So now, if I run this, then you can see that it returns all of our employees based on their name. Now, if I wanted to sort these based on the employee's age, then it would be as easy as coming up to the sort function here, and instead of returning the employee name, I'm going to return the employee age, and if I run that, now you can see that it's the employee age um, in ascending order. And lastly, if I wanted to do this based on salary, then I could go ahead and make this salary and save that and run it. And you can see that it sorts it uh, by the salary in ascending order. Now you can also still pass in your other parameters here too. So if I did a reverse equals true and then ran this, then it would uh, sort in the descending order based on our key, which is salary. So now we have all the salaries in descending order. Now, if you have a complicated sort function, then it's probably best to break out uh, these functions into separate functions like this. 
But for those of you who are familiar with lambda functions, then you probably noticed that something this short would be easy to turn into a lambda function. So instead of setting this key equal to this e dot sort, uh, I really could just do a lambda here of e. Now I'm not going to go into lambdas. If you haven't seen these before, then don't worry about it. It's just a way to uh, quickly write an anonymous function. So if I wanted to sort on the age, I'll do or the name, I'll do e dot name. I'm going to go ahead and take out reverse here and save that and run it. And now you can see that it is sorted by the employee's name in ascending order. And since we're using this lambda function here, uh, this our sort function up here that we used before isn't actually doing anything. So I could still run that without this e underscore sort function. Now I should also mention that if you're working with attributes like this, that you can import a function that uh, specifically does this. So I'm just going to do my import from down here. Um, so if I import the operator module and do a from operator import, it is called adder getter. This is it right here. Now what we can do with this is we can just use this as a replacement for our key. So and I'm going to take this lambda out here. So I'm going to do an adder getter and the attribute that I want, let's see, I'll just do, I'll do this as age. So if I save that and run it, now you can see that it's sorted based on the age. So you might wonder why I just didn't show you that adder getter right away instead of first showing you how to do uh, these functions and the lambdas and things like that. But knowing how to uh, sort with these custom functions, it'll allow you to be a little bit more flexible down the road when you want to uh, sort more complicated items. So I think that about does it for this video. I uh, hope it gives you some good ideas for how you can sort your list and objects in any way that you'd like. But if you do have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.